This is the top 10 scary things told by Disney employees. Starting us off in at number 10 is cast members who get to experience the rides after dark. And by get to, I mean have to. They're absolutely forced to. Well, apparently some of these rides are absolutely 100% haunted, especially it's a small world. I remember I was stuck in that ride one time and I wanted to absolutely kill myself because it was so annoying, it was on repeat, it's so repetitive. Well, multiple cast members have reported seeing the little animated dolls blink or appear in entirely different places places long after that they've been unplugged and switched off for the night. Honestly, there's just something about the ride that creeps me out and a reason why I just won't go on this ride ever again. In at number 9 is the poor employee who had a little bit of a game with Walt Disney himself after he died. A bit of backstory, whenever Walt was at the parks, the staff would always make sure that the light in the window of the fire station was turned on to let everyone know, you know Walt's here, let's uh, be on our best behavior. Well once he died, they turned off the lights. But one day, a staff member was cleaning the room where the lamp was and they saw that it was turned on. She turned it off, turned around, and when she turned back, it was switched on again. This would freak me out. She again turned it off. I wouldn't do that. I would just run like crazy, not look back, put in my resignation, and I'd probably go work for um, Microsoft or something. Well, something inside her was telling her that Walt was letting her know that, hey, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still much alive in this park. Well, since then, the lights always stay on to let everyone know that Walt is looking down on the parks. So everyone there better be on their best behavior. Following up at number eight is when a Disney employee noticed that there was a mysterious box chained to a lamppost. Anyone who's seen any type of crime shows know that if there's a mysterious package anywhere, it might be a bomb and to clear the area and call 911. This employee jumped into action and did just that because the last thing anybody wants is an active bomb and in the happiest place on earth. Turns out, thankfully, it wasn't a bomb. It was just some family's lunch and they just didn't want to carry it around with them. But seriously guys, I don't understand wanting to carry your lunch around. I mean, at that point, just go out and buy lunch in a restaurant. Just go buy a turkey leg somewhere. Well, I guess on this day, it would save a lot of people a lot of stress. Okay, next up, at number seven spot is the employee who had to help break up a fight that could have ended really poorly. Apparently, a group of 20 year olds were getting rowdy and started punching each other in the arms but one of them missed and ended up psh, punching a girl right in the face is this real life right now how do you mess that up well this is bad enough but imagine doing that and then realizing that the girl's dad is right there it's like psh, and then right behind her is is this big dude well this guy he was actually six foot four over 300 pounds and really mad like really mad. It, it literally took four security guards and two deputies to pull the dad off the guy who punched his daughter but not after bloodying up himself. Number six today goes to a worker who might have told an exorcism at the haunted mansion. Apparently before the ride even opened up, an employee heard music coming from the walls of the seance room. Mysterious music is bad enough from any room, but a seance room, especially when there are rumors that the spell book was a real one, which was once owned by witches. Well, that is class A nope material for me. Instead of cleansing the place, this employee decided to just install speakers to drown out the noise, but I guess whatever helps you sleep at night, I guess. Halfway through, in at number five, is a staff member who discovered the body of a man who had died in his hotel room. I guess cleaning staff must have found him, but it was apparent that he had taken his own life. The room's windows and entrance were covered by those pardon our dust signs. Uh, I've never seen that kind of sign before, like, pardon, uh, we, we didn't clean this place, uh, don't mind it. <laughs> and there was an important meet and greet to distract people from the room as police arrived on the scene. No matter what I encountered in my life, I feel like finding someone else's body would probably be the scariest thing to happen. In at number four is the employee who had to stop a situation that could have ended a lot worse than it did. This group of drunk people were on the Dumbo ride when they decided that um, it would be a good idea to reenact the Lion King. Yeah, you guys know where I'm going with this one. 
You guys know what I'm talking about. And they held their hands like Rafiki did to Simba during the circle of life. Well, the ride operator emergency stopped the ride and the entire group was escorted out of the park and arrested as soon as they stepped out of the gates. So did they have to wait until they were completely out of the park to be arrested? Because I would try to resist and never leave. Like I would never try to cross that line of like Disney exit, Disney exit. Next up, number three is an employee who had to deal with a watery attack. Well, during a jungle cruise, everything was going pretty well until suddenly one lady entirely lost her cool at the guy sitting in front of her. Mind you, he hadn't done anything other than enjoy his ride because he's in the happiest place on earth. Well, she started to scream at him and then lunged at him, clawing his face and kicking him. The skipper on board had to fire four rounds from his pistol into the air to warn other boats, rushed back to the dock and tried to pull the lady off of the guy. Well, apparently half the people on board were trying to help as well. When medical and security arrived, they finally got her secured and into an ambulance. Turns out she was schizophrenic and hadn't taken her medication that day and unfortunately had an episode in the middle of the water. It's always sad when somebody has a mental illness that affects them like that. Like you're trying to enjoy your ride and all of a sudden you're having panic attacks, you're freaking out. And, but I can't even imagine how scary that would have been for staff and customers as well who may not be experienced with understanding what that person is going through. Number two today goes to an employee who had to deal with the aftermath of something truly disgusting. Apparently in line at one of the rides, a fully grown man decided to take a poop in the corner of uh, the pre-show, which is pretty damn disgusting. If I was the employee in that situation, I wouldn't do anything at all because I would just be in total shock. My mouth would just be like, like, is, is this real life right now? Is it, did that guy really take a sh And finally, in a number one spot is a cast member who met their tragic end at one of the shows back in 1974. 18 year old Deborah Gale Stone was working at the American Sings attraction at Disneyland at the end of the night. She got too close to the area of the stage by a moving wall and a stationary wall. And as the one wall moved, she got trapped between the two and it ended up being crushed. Nobody was in the theater with her, but the ride operator next door heard her screams and rushed to help. But unfortunately, they were too late. Eventually, the solid walls were replaced with, you know, breakable ones, ones to prevent a tragedy like this, one to prevent someone getting squished. I don't know who thought of this. There should be like a fail safe or like pressure sensors. Like you know how you have a garage door and something's underneath it, it would go and then all of a sudden stop because there are sensors. Well, they definitely should have had one in place. Well, it was rumored that Deborah now haunts the attraction and now can be heard telling others to be careful. Okay, so starting us off, number 10 is a family who, like many others, decide to book a table at Cinderella's castle for dinner. However, unlike other dinners here, this one had a far from fairy tale ending. During the dinner, the husband announced that his wife of 15 years had been cheating on him. He took their kids and left her right there. And probably with the bill as well. Well, it serves her right in my opinion. Our number nine is an employee who witnessed something totally horrifying and this person that they witnessed doesn't deserve of taking care of anything living. Well, this person who wanted to go on rides, they decided, you know what? I'm not gonna let things hold me back. I'm gonna put my objects and I'm gonna put my stuff in a locker so I don't have to worry about it and I can go on rides. I don't have to worry about them. Well, apparently one of the things that this person put in a locker was their dog. First of all, I didn't know you can go to a theme park and take your dog. And secondly, how does this make common sense? How does this make sense at all? Absolutely horrible and for a staff member to kind of witness that is insane. Taking the number eight spot today is a grown-up who went to a park dressed as Snow White. Uh, and I mean like sure okay people do dress up as characters all the time at the parks. I mean it, it's a thing. Well except this person got super hammered and pretend like she was the official Snow White and she started signing autographs, taking pictures, and wreaking havoc at the park. I don't think that I remember Tipsy being one of the seven dwarfs. This is absolutely horrifying, especially if you're a child and that is your like hero 
and they're stammering and stumbling and falling over. It's definitely a sight not to see. Coming in at number seven is something that, believe it or not, is a regular occurrence. More than a few times, staff have had to stop people from entering the park because they were caught bringing in human ashes inside of the gates with the intention of spreading them somewhere at the park. They just wanted their loved ones to rest forever at the happiest place on earth, which in theory is a, a sweet, but in seriousness, in reality, it's kind of creepy. Like you're spreading a dead person's ashes on rides or in the water or on the sidewalk. Spreading human remains at an amusement park, I mean, this isn't something recommended. It's something you shouldn't do. Besides, apparently, they just end up getting vacuumed up by staff. So what's the point of sprinkling them on a ride that just gets cleaned up anyways, or sprinkle it on a sidewalk that just gets swept up at the end of the day? All right, moving right along, number six, this guest had a super creative, illegal, and dangerous way of expressing their anger to an employee. I don't know what this disagreement was about, but this guest decided that the best way to get their point across, psh, just add an employee. I wonder what happened. I bet you the cops were called. This seems like this might have happened. Uh, you know, this wasn't the first time. All right, halfway there. And at number five is the peak of stupidity. No offense, but apparently multiple guests have asked employees to turn on the AC outside because they thought that all of Disney World was legitimately under a glass dome. Like this is like the Truman Show. Like, uh, can you turn the AC and point it outside please? Because it's pretty hot out here. I mean, it's 35 degrees. Let's make it down. Let's bring it down to 20. Let's bring it down a few notch. We're sweating out here. I'm not sure if that's how it works. I don't know if putting AC outside would work. And unless, you know what, what if the world turned on AC outside in the summertime? Would that like cool the earth? Uh, I'm, I'm down to try it. I'm, I'm down to waste a few grand in uh, hydro bills. All right, moving on. Number four, an employee checking over the Space Mountain ride. Well, they found more than they expected. They found an entire glass eye in one of the rockets. As for the person who lost it, I'm not sure how they didn't realize, but then again, if you have a glass eye and it just falls out, it, it, I guess the person didn't feel it. What if they're on the ride, they're going so fast and there's so much wind, it popped out and they thought maybe it was just a gust of wind. Uh, you can't really see your eye in your, in your eye unless you're passing by a mirror. So I guess maybe I can see how they lost their glass eye, but imagine someone like picking that up. I don't know if, I, I guess there wouldn't be like blood on it or anything like that, but it's a real glass eye. It would for sure freak me out, and at least it wasn't a real eye. Coming in number three is someone else who lost an assistive device. During a ride at the Animal Kingdom, an object was seen flying past customers. Nobody had any idea what it was until after the ride, one of the customers approached an employee and explained that somehow, okay, get this. Their prosthetic leg had fallen off during a ride. I mean, okay, maybe, maybe an eye can come out. It's just psh, Maybe, maybe an arm can fall off, but your leg is in the ride, in the seat, like it's on the floor. How does that come out? Unless it's one of those rides where you're sitting and your legs are dangling and it just, it just pops out. It kind of, kind of sucks. Sucks for the person that lost their prosthetic leg because now they are having an even more tougher time getting around. I hope they found it and I hope it's okay because those things sound like it can be very expensive. Nearing the end on this list, number two is actually a pretty sad story. One day back in 1973, two brothers snuck out and hid on Tom Sawyer's island after the park had closed. I, I don't know if people are doing this as like challenges, but you hear about these stories about people staying in theme parks after they close. I mean, it wouldn't be the hardest thing to do. Well, when they tried to swim back, one of the brothers wasn't able to make it and he ended up drowning. I, and I mean, it's after hours, everything's closed. There's no one there to save them, no one to hear them scream. His body was found actually the next morning when staff members were getting the park ready to open up. Imagine being an employee, you're like, oh, you're opening up a ride and you see like potentially a person floating in the water, I definitely wouldn't approach it. I'd call the authorities or managers to like get that situation situated. Absolutely terrifying and I, I, it would leave me with so many questions. And finishing off today's list, in at number one, we have, well, if you've ever noticed that the characters always have an escort to walk with them, you know, throughout the park. Well, this story is why. Like, you know how you see like Snow White going by and you see like four security guards, or you see like four people around him, just to make sure this person's safe? Well, one guest got into a fight with his buddy because he didn't believe that they were people inside of the suits. Like, you must have been so drunk or so drugged up that you thought 
Like, oh wait, is there someone inside of that suit or is that a real character? Well, he thought Goofy was actually a giant dog in a hat and to prove his point, he stabbed Goofy. Goofy was stabbed. I have no defense for this guy. It's complete and utter stupidity at its pinnacle point. Either he knew he was stabbing a person or he thought he was stabbing a dog. So either way, both situations, not favorable for yourself in society. I'm pretty sure you deserve to be locked up in four confined walls at that point and just spend at least 25 years to think about what you've just done. I mean, you actually thought you were stabbing a, a dog, like a, like a giant dog in a suit. Makes absolutely no sense. Well, because of that story, and probably because of many other stories that are of violence towards these employees, well, that's the reason why there is security there having to protect them. In it, number 10. So back at it with Pluto in 1997, a whole family attacked a Pluto, pushed her into the fountain. Okay, hold on a second. I want to pause this story for a second because reading it, it said push her into the fountain. And I'm a 30 year old man and you know what? I just found out that Pluto is a female. For some reason, I, I thought Pluto was a male. Bad assumption, I guess. Or maybe this employee is referring to whoever was inside the Pluto. So maybe Pluto is a male like I suspected and it was just played by a female. But either way, my mind is kind of blown right now. Well, the employee goes on to say that they didn't actually see the attack, but they just got to deal with the aftermath backstage. Later, Pluto told this employee that the family was mad that she had to take her break after they had waited to get a picture. I think Pluto either broke her arm or her leg and the people responsible for this, well, they ended up getting arrested. Number nine on our list. Okay, this one's pretty funny, but also equally as gross. An employee recalls that they used to use a Disney code words for things they needed to tell other employees, you know, over the radio. Baloo, well, that was a code for blood that needed to be cleaned up. Well, one day this employee sees a two-year-old boy half naked taking a poop in the playground, in the children's playground. He sees the employee and starts to cry and just runs away. Well, the employee didn't have a code word for a human taking a poop. They only have a code word for like blood. <laughs> blood clean up in aisle two, please. So he made one up on the spot and he said, code poo situation in the kid's play area and Piglet is on the loose. Can you imagine seeing that? I don't know what I would do if I heard Piglet is on the loose. What, what does that mean? All right, so if you guys are liking this video, make sure you guys hit the like button. It really helps us out in the algorithms. It makes us featured on YouTube and it gets more exposure for you guys. Next up on this list at number eight. This story made the news in 2013. A drunk 23 year old had been drinking at Epcot's World Showcase. So this is where you can enjoy a drink from different places in the world. Well, it sounds like a good time, but obviously easy to get a little bit, uh, a little bit too tipsy, which seems to be what happened to this guy. He had the bright idea to run into a backstage area and steal a cargo cart. In the process, Disney employees tried to stop him, but he was on a tear. He ended up punching not one, but two employees employees before hitting a third with a three foot long PVC pipe in the head. I mean, ouch. We don't know what happened to the guy, but I imagine something along the lines of being banned for the rest of his life and a and battery charges. And yeah, that might be the way that that story ended. Moving right along on this list to number seven, we have this. The Disney employee had publicly stated that the bad days that the employees endure at the happiest place on earth will kind of haunt you. After he shared a story that a 57 year old Miami Beach tourist headbutted him. Okay, so the backstory of this, well, apparently the employee wouldn't let this dude's wife who wasn't disabled in any way use the wheelchair line at the monorail station. So instead of asking her, hey ma'am, can you get out of this wheelchair line? He just decided to go with the headbutts. Number six. Wow. 
Imagine taking your family to the happiest place on earth and leaving the family outing that day with one child missing. It happens more than you think, in fact, on multiple occasions. In 2015, three Disney employees were caught by police as a part of a huge sting. But Disney goes on to great lengths to cover this up because obviously, well, it's bad for business. Number five. Disney accidents, of course there are going to be accidents at theme parks, pretty scary to think about, crazy rides, it's kind of a miracle that these kinds of stories don't happen more often. But a boy back in 2000 fell out of the Roger Rabbit cartoon spin ride and he suffered major internal injuries and was hospitalized with serious conditions. I wonder if Disney paid the medical bills for the family, compensated them for the rest of their lives. That must have just been so heartbreaking. Pretty depressing story, but let's try to move on here. Let me take you guys back all the way back to 1978. Okay, picture this. Winnie the Pooh slapping a girl. Okay, no seriously, it actually went to court in 1981, a few years after the event happened. So the girl's parents claimed that Pooh Bear had slapped their daughter, but the Disney employee in the Winnie the Pooh suit claimed that the girl had been tugging on his costume, and when he turned around, he accidentally knocked her over. He actually showed up to court in the costume and convinced the jury that the arms of the costume would have prevented him from slapping. Coming in at number three on this list, we have this. Alright, we gotta go find the kids. Dude, where are the kids at? Another Disney employee rumored that circulated over the years is that there is a jail under Disney World. So if you commit a crime in Disney World, you line hop, you butt in line, you're going to the underground Disney World jail. Well, this is where people break and rules are kept while they wait for the police or security to arrive. But actually this claim has been debunked. There's a network of tunnels called Utilidors, short for Utility Corridors, that allows cast members and other staff to access different parts of the park and move around without being seen. So as to not break the illusion and take guests out of the immersive Disney experience. They use these tunnels, hidden away from the public. That's how they got away with it. Well, I can't confirm or deny through research, but there's a lot of theories out there that suggest there's a possibility. A 38-year-old employee dressed as Pluto was killed when he was run over by a Beauty and the Beast float over the Share Your Dream Come True parade. According to Disney officials, this is the first fatal incident to a cast member. Death at Disney doesn't seem to be as uncommon as one would think. I mean, we just talked about that little boy who lost his life. A cast member who dressed up as Pluto named Javier Cruz was about to enter Frontierland in the parade in 2004. Well, the foot of his costume got stuck under the Beauty and the Beast float, but the float couldn't stop fast enough. Cruz was struck and killed before entering the public viewing area. This is such a sad story and one that you think could be easily prevented and that Disney would have safe protocols in place since they run a theme park where a million things could go wrong at any given time. Well the Occupational Safety and Health Administration gave Walt Disney World a $6,300 fine for this incident. Seems like nothing for a company worth billions and billions of dollars. A $6,000 fine because they caused death upon somebody? Something just doesn't seem right right now. And number one on this list, thank you guys for making it to number one on this list. We have See You Later Alligator. Well, not quite the case, but in 2016, that was the last thing a father saw when an alligator attacked his son, pulling him into the water. I mean, with all the technology that we have, why not just have a mechanic or an electronic alligator. There's no point of having these dangerous animals alive just roaming in the park, unless the alligator got in somehow, but why not just build fences all around it to keep everyone inside safe? Starting off this countdown, we have the lifeguards. So I came across this TikTok and apparently he used to be a lifeguard at Disney. But what they don't tell you is that the lifeguards are told that they have to be constantly watching the water 
as if somebody's purposely trying to drown because people apparently do that. Disney noticed that people would go there to drown on purpose so that they could sue Disney. So Disney lifeguards are trained to look for that. That is absolutely horrifying if he's telling the truth. It must be super stressful being a lifeguard at Disney. Like their water parks and wave pools are always packed. It's so sad if that has actually happened. In our ninth spot, we have the deaths. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. You know the drill because it really helps us out. Also, if you haven't already, go check out the other parts of the series. So Disney is very, very protective of its image. It wants to maintain that it's a safe and family friendly place. So they claim that no one has ever died at their park, which is clearly false. Tons of accidents have happened at Disney World and Disneyland. Both visitors and workers workers have lost their lives at Disney. But their claim is 100% true. Now, you're probably thinking, how is this possible? So it turns out what Disney does is when someone does die at the park, employees have to remove the body from the property before pronouncing them dead. That means no one technically died at the park, only outside of the park's gates. They do this all so that families feel safe coming there because if no one dies there, then clearly it's super safe. But still, this is pretty sketchy if you ask me. In our it spot, we have the injuries. Now, if you work for Disney as one of the characters and you get injured on the job, well, guess what? You can't receive medical assistance until you're out of the public's eye. This is just another crazy rule that Disney has. You have to stay in character no matter what. They all do this to preserve the illusion of Disney and magic. I mean, how horrifying would it be if all of a sudden Mickey rips off his head and starts like gushing blood? And now one worker was told before accepting a job as water goofy on a Disney cruise, he had to agree that if for some reason he started drowning, he had to be carried away before lifeguards could remove his costume and perform CPR. So he could literally be dying in the costume and need medical attention right away but Disney won't allow that. Moving on to number seven, we have the repairs. Ever notice how Disney is pretty much always in great condition? I mean, some of the rides are super old, but they don't look it. Well, according to a former Disney employee, every night workers go around the park touching up any and everything. During the day, the workers know if there's any graffiti anywhere in the park or if there's paint chipping anywhere. They write it down and let the night shift workers know and then they go around fixing it all. I mean, I just took in that I've never seen graffiti at Disney, and that's exactly why. But also, it's a very tedious job. They have to go around the full park and get it all done before the park reopens in the morning. Moving on to number six, we have the fire accident. So this next story comes from a Disney employee that worked as an outdoor vendor. One night while watching a fireworks show, Tinkerbell got stuck on the wire above the castle since she had been hoisted up because she was flying in the air. But her wire was stuck and she almost burned to death up there. There was a whole Indiana Jones portion of the show and in it they had large fireballs. Well, they couldn't stop the show to get Tinkerbell down, so they kind of just left her there and turned off her spotlight so no one could see what was going on, and then they prayed for the best. But like I said before, it's a risk you take while working for Disney. You know, you could be dying and they're not gonna save your life if it interferes with their show. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed ride. Believe it or not, but there is a ride at Disney that all workers believe is cursed. This is the Matterhorn. First off, this ride is responsible for the most fatal and non-fatal incidents. The ride caught on fire, injuring a family in their sled. And another visitor died after she was launched out of her seat and then hit by another bobsled. More on this later. You think they would have fixed this ride after the first couple of deaths, but no, they blame it on a curse instead. They should just kind of look into the safety of that ride, because I don't know if it's that safe. In our fourth spot, we have the death on Space Mountain. Okay, this one is pretty dark. So in 1979, a woman died on the Space Mountain ride. She was only 31 at the time. So basically after the ride was done, this woman didn't feel well at all, but she couldn't get out of her seat by herself. The ride operators were trying to get her out of her seat, but the other workers weren't notified, so they ended up sending her on the ride again. 
This time, when the ride was done, she was completely unconscious. It literally put her in a coma. She passed away a week later. Now, technically, this wasn't Disney's fault. I mean, part of it was. They had a lawsuit filed against them, but it was dismissed because apparently while on the ride, a tumor dislodged from her heart and then traveled to her brain. Yeah, I know, that's super scary. In our third spot, we have the ghost of Walt Disney. So for those of you who don't know, Disney had a secret apartment. It was located just above the firehouse on Main Street, USA. This apartment was built so that he could watch the guests enjoy his creation without being overwhelmed by the crowds. Now, his apartment was so secretive that him and his family and special guests were the only ones allowed in there. In fact, photographers were rarely allowed inside. As a result, there are hardly any photos of Mr. Disney and his family in this place. Well, after the passing of Walt Disney in 1966, cast members decide to place a small lamp at the window. They keep the light on to symbolize that Disney's spirit is still alive at Disneyland. And this may be indeed true, because it's said that his ghost still haunts his apartment. A number of employees have seen Disney while cleaning the apartment. Apparently one worker was in there and then the lights started flickering on and off. Another worker said she heard a voice say, don't forget, I am still here. And that's when she probably quit, because that's terrifying. In our second spot, we have Dolly's Dip. So in 1984, Regina, otherwise known as Dolly Young, was riding on the Matterhorn when her seatbelt came undone. She was then thrown from the ride and hit and killed by another bobsled. Now, there's still much debate as to how her seatbelt came undone. Some say that she unbuckled it to help her children who were in another car. Others think that the seatbelt just wasn't buckled properly in the first place. Either way, this accident was super tragic. But that's not all. Now Disney employees claim that Dolly's spirit haunts the ride. The area in which she died is now called Dolly's Dip, and employees hate going there by themselves. Those that do have claimed to feel like someone is watching them. Others say that the lights in Dolly's Dip never work properly anymore. Now, everyone kind of just avoids that area at all costs. And in our number one spot, we have the tragic accident. So this story was shared on Reddit by a man who once worked at Disney as a VIP tour guide. So he was in the city hall when two women came in with two girls. One of the girls was in a wheelchair. The other girl looked very depressed. Both of them had cuts and bruises all over them. The two women with them were nurses from the hospital that the girls had just been to. They were there to ask for a refund for the girls' tickets. Now, here's where the story gets very sad. So apparently the girls had been with their mom and dad at Epcot, but on their way home, they got in a really bad car accident. They both lost their parents in the crash. So the nurses had come to try and get a refund for the tickets so that the girls could get money to try and go home. Now, how dark is that? That's extremely sad. Starting off this countdown, we have the man with the cane. The man with the cane is an urban legend that has gotten passed on from employee to employee. So the legend is about a man with a cane that haunts the haunted mansion ride at Disney. So according to legend, back in the day, a man died in a plane crash. The plane crashed in a lake near the park, and now his spirit haunts the ride. On a number of occasions, cast members have seen this man on the ride. He can only be seen between the offload and onload points of the ride. And he just sits there alone, holding his cane in his lap, just staring straight ahead. They've also seen his spirit late at night, especially after closing. According to some psychics, this man is trapped between worlds. Coming in at number nine, we have the scripts. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because I said so, and it really helps so. So please hit that like button. So it's no shock that the cast members have memorized a script as to what they have to say. But what you probably didn't know is that they are given around three days to learn the whole lengthy script. And they also have to learn all the speeds and stops and controls of the ride that they're working on. And before actually getting to work on the ride, they have to practice the script in front of a trainer. 
and they have to do this until they get every single word right. If they accidentally say the word okay instead of all right, they have to start the whole script all over again from the beginning. Man, that would absolutely kill me. Like that sounds like torture. In our eighth spot, we have the masked characters. So in my last part to this video, I talked about how the masked characters have to stay in character at all times. Even if they're injured or literally dying, they can't just whip off their mask. They need to wait until they're out of the public's eye. Same thing goes if you're sick. Literally, workers are told to throw up in their mask if they're sick. Taking the head off is just not an option. Now, they do have a signal that they can do if they don't feel well or if they need assistance, and that's covering one eye with one hand and then raising the other arm in the air. Someone will see this and then come get them. Still. That does not sound pleasant at all. Moving on to number seven, we have the water cooler. Okay, this one grossed me out, not gonna lie. So this next Disney employee used to work at an office for Disney. And in the office, there was a water cooler that you could use to fill up your bottles before going on stage. Well, one day their manager was drinking the water when he said that it tasted a little stale, but he continued to drink the water anyways. About two hours later, another worker fills up their bottle, takes a sip, and spits out the water. Turns out that a freaking giant bullfrog had gotten into the water cooler tank and died in there. So they literally had been drinking dead bullfrog water for days until someone finally noticed. That's disgusting. In our sixth spot, we have the security. What not a lot of people realize is just how tight Disney's security really is. Disney actually has tons of undercover security guards. They are just dressed up and pose as tourists. In fact, one employee said that when she had a kid, Disney paid for her, her husband, and her kid to walk around the park undercover. That's like the coolest job ever. Like get paid to go on the rides and stuff and just spy on people. Also, everything is constantly being taped. Every second of your visit, you're on camera. Don't even try to do any funny business because Mickey's got eyes on you. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the costumes. Honestly, being a Disney costume character isn't that great. Like you're in the hot sun and heat in a heavy costume that other people have also sweated in. It gets worse. Most of the times, the costumes can't be washed. This is because they're made out of like fur or fancy fabric. The Beast from Beauty and the Beast costume is one that apparently never gets washed. So it's just sprayed with a bunch of disinfectants and a lot of cast members say that it reeks. And some employees have admitted to not wearing undergarments while in the costumes. Yikes. Yikes and more yikes, no thank you. And at number four, we have the language. Obviously, if you work at Disney, you have to keep it PG. There's no swearing or inappropriate behavior allowed. But they also have some other strange rules. Employers are not allowed to ever say that they saw any rats or pests or cockroaches at the park. You also can't ever say the word died. For example, one employee once said, my radio battery died and they got in so much trouble. You can't say the word at all, even if there's no bad meaning behind it. And if you do see like a mouse or something, you have to say things like, I found one of Mickey's friends. So everything is just always in code. In our third spot, we have the ride restrictions. So this story comes from a former Disney employee. Apparently, parents try to sneak their kids on rides all the time which is super dangerous. In our second spot, we have the ghost named George. Apparently, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Walt Disney World is haunted by a former worker who died there. Legend goes that George was a construction worker hired to help build the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, but during construction, he either fell off the set or was crushed by a piece of the set. He died instantly. Shortly after the theme park opened, a very sad and old looking woman was seen constantly riding this attraction alone. Turns out that this was George's mother. Now it's said that George's ghost haunts the ride and causes mischief. Apparently if you don't wish him good morning or good night or respect him, then he will make life tough for you. He has been blamed for causing a number of malfunctions with the ride. Now, some versions of the story say that the tall tower that's seen during the burning city scene is the piece of set that killed George. It's now referred to as George's Tower, and apparently his initials are carved into the base of that tower. No matter how many times people have attempted to cover up his initials, they will always reappear. And in our number one spot, we have the crocodiles. Okay, this fact literally blew my mind. 
So, Kilimanjaro Safari is a safari attraction at Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida. During one part of the safari, you go over a bridge with real crocodiles underneath. Well, according to Disney's protocol, if anyone falls into the crocodile pit during the safari, then they're to just drive off immediately. Like, you don't even help them. You just let them get fed to the crocodiles. They do this because the crocodiles are normally fed from that spot. So as soon as something falls into the water from that spot, they're done. The crocodiles will have already attacked them before you can even help them. And two, they drive off so that the guests don't have to see the horror that's about to unfold. Still, that's incredibly dark. Like imagine your loved one falls in and then the driver just speeds off and you can't go help them. <laughs>